Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how you personalize your web pages using Nexus Chrome extension. Basically, how you can take your web page from something like this to something like this. Let's begin with the initial setup. I'm here within the Chrome Web Store where you can search for Nextweave and then click on the Nextweave website personalization extension to add it. The Nextweave plugin for Gmail and LinkedIn has been covered in an additional tutorial. So click on this extension to download it and then click on Add to Chrome. Once your extension is added, you will be able to see it within the extensions list on the Chrome bar. Now to activate the extension, click on it. You're going to be prompted to enter an API key. Back from the Nextweave platform, navigate to the integration section. This is where you can add and maintain all your API keys. Click on add key, enter the name and then add key again. Now all you have to do is copy this generated key and paste it inside your extension. Now this is just a one-time activity which you'll have to execute uh, the first time that you download and activate the plugin and in case you reinstall it. So now the plugin is activated, let's move on to the next step of our initial setup. So the next step in the setup is adding your website to Nextweave. So navigate to the manage website section within the Nextweave application and click on add website. Here enter a domain for the website you will be personalizing. So this is a demo website that I'll be working on and click on update. Once your site is updated on the Nextweave platform, uh, a script tag will be generated. Now copy this script tag and inside your website's admin, add this under the head tag. So I'm using WordPress to build my demo website, but you could potentially use any other website builder as well. So uh, in WordPress, I can find the header and footer settings under settings, insert headers and footers and uh, under scripts in header is where I've added the generated uh, website script from Nextweave. So now your plugin is activated and your website has been added to Nextweave. But I would recommend a couple of more things to do in the setup before we jump into actually personalizing your web page. The first is to create an entire layout of your website. So you should have placeholders for the text as well as images and designated spaces for where you want to insert your video. This is because the plugin doesn't actually come into play inside the editor or the backend of the web page, but it's invoked on the final published version, which is why it's important for us to have the entire layout prepared before we start personalizing the web page. So here in the Brizzy editor that I've used to build my web page, I've created designated spaces for text. I've added an empty column for where I intend to add my personalized video, as well as placeholder images that I will later replace with my personalized images. Another point to note is that a personalized image or GIF can only be added inside an image component, that is, instead of an existing placeholder image. However, a text or a video inside the plugin can be added in inside any empty element or div tag. This may seem a little confusing at the moment, but it will become clearer later on in the video. Now, once your landing page layout has been configured, it's time to move on to the next week platform to finalize the media templates that you'd like to use. Now, in my example, as I stated earlier, I intend to add one personalized video as well as one, two, three personalized images to my web page. So all in all, four media templates. Now you could either use any of the public templates that have been provided by Nextweave or create your own template. I've already gone ahead and created the three images as well as the one video that I will be using in my example. You can learn more about creating engaging image and video templates through our video tutorials as well as our knowledge base. Now once you've identified the templates you're going to use, run quick campaigns on them. So just click on the menu against any of your templates and click on use. Then enter a name for the campaign and click on quick campaign to confirm. That's it. This campaign will be ready to be used inside the plugin. 
I'm going to go ahead and follow the same step for my image templates as well. Now, as you can see, I've created the four quick campaigns associated with the four templates I'm going to use. Now, a couple of things to note. The website plugin will only accept quick campaigns, which is why we went with that campaign method. The next thing to note is that you can use up to five quick campaigns. Yes, that is the limit, five quick campaigns, which is akin to selecting five templates to personalize your web pages. Now let's begin personalizing our web page. Now you have to be in the final published version of your web page and no longer inside the editor. Now click on the extension to activate it and then click on start editor. So this launches the plugin interface. You have your modal here where you can choose your campaigns and make the personalization changes and a banner at the top that gives you a count of the personalization changes and the ability to save and reset your changes. So the first thing we have to do is import the campaigns. Click on the select campaigns drop down and then you can multi select up to five quick campaigns from this list. Once done, click outside the drop down and click on use campaigns. You'll get a prompt saying that the campaign data has been imported successfully. So we can now start making changes to the different elements within the page. To update the text, just click on the text box. The text editor appears and you'll see a list of variables listed here. Now these variables have come as a union of the campaigns that I've selected. So in all the four templates and campaigns, these three variables have been employed. So they're going to be listed here. Now to make edits to this text, I just need to type in my new text inside the text box and click on the variable that I want to use here. Now, as you may recall, I added an empty column where I wanted to add my video. And I also said that you can add text and video to any empty element. So I designated this column. I'm going to click on it. Now between text and video, I'll go to the video tab. Now only one video has been imported because I only selected one video campaign. So I'll just click on that video and it's been added to my page. Another point to note here is that I can't control the width of this video, which is why when I was designing my web page, I made sure to create columns in a way where I could define my max width. Similarly, in the text as well, you can see that while you can make changes to the content of the text, you won't be able to edit things like the text style, size, color. So it's important for you to Create your landing page beforehand as though it was its, as though it was going to be the final version and only then make changes to it inside the personalization plugin. We can go ahead and add our personalized images by clicking on the existing images and then choosing their personalized alternatives. As you can see, you can also add personalized GIFs to your web pages and landing pages. And when we talk about personalizing text, it's not just the text that is standalone, but it's also text boxes within buttons. So you can make your CTAs more powerful as well. The only thing you have to make sure is that you accommodate enough space when you're formulating and configuring the layout of your web page. Any single change can be reversed if you click on remove changes inside the model. If you want to run an overall reset on all the personalization you've done on your web page, click on reset page. Once you're happy with the layout of the web page that you've created, click on save. You will get this notification saying that your website data has been saved successfully. Now let's take a look at our freshly personalized page. I'm opening this in the incognito mode of my browser because the Chrome plugin is still active. So you see my web page actually doesn't display any of the personalization changes that I previously made. Now this is happening because I, even though I've opened the web page URL, I haven't specified the values that the personalization variable should take. That's why it reverts to its default. So now I'm going to show you how we can modify this URL to feed the web page values that we want the personalization to take. So now here, just for your reference, I've listed out the original URL and then I've listed out the variables that I've used to personalize the web page. 
And now I'm going to show you how we can modify our original URL to specify the values that we want these variables to take. So let's copy the original URL. And now we need to append this URL with the following syntax. So at the end of your URL, put a question mark and then type in var underscore. Okay. So this is just going to be the prefix for, for the variable that we want to modify. So after question mark var underscore, now type in the variable name. So in my case, this is username, but you could put in whatever variable you find at your end. Now we put in equal to sign and then specify the value that we want this variable to take. So say I want this variable to take the value of John. So I'm telling NextWave that open this URL and now replace all usernames with the value John. For any additional variables that I want to personalize, I can just add an ampersand and repeat var underscore, put in the variable name. So here I've put in exactly business underscore name, just as it's listed here, is equal to Amazon. And for my last variable, I'll put ampersand var underscore website is equal to amazon.com. So you can replace these with whichever variables you have used at your end. But you must remember that the syntax, additional syntax begins with a question mark. And you must precede every variable name with var underscore. So now let's take a look at what this modified URL yields for us. So you see the personalization changes that I had earlier made are now being reflected and the values of the variables are being changed with John, Amazon and Amazon.com. You see the first name there inside the video. I also added the business name inside the paragraphs. You can see the Amazon logo and in the CT and the GIF as well. There are a lot of use cases that can be built around personalized web pages. You could link them to forms, for example, and personalize your funnel, or you could link them to images that you're sending out through email campaigns. A lot of use cases have been covered in additional resources such as our video tutorials and our knowledge base. And of course, we look forward to you trying the website plugin yourselves and sharing ideas on use cases and your feedback with us. Here are some additional resources designed to help you get the most out of NextWeave. The first, our YouTube channel which contains additional video tutorials just like the one you watched. Here is a link to our knowledge base which contains written articles and guides for everything related to NextWeave. And finally, our Facebook group which will give you access to a community of NextWeave users from across the world with whom you can exchange questions and ideas on how to use NextWeave to the best of its abilities. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.